morning to you all and welcome once more to the Vicarage study in Wedmore as we gather together for our daily prayer. Do you know this, I think for the first time since we have been doing these prayers together for almost three weeks that there hasn't been bright sunshine all around so it feels a little bit more gloomy today but of course the light of Christ hopefully is burning in us and through us and around us strongly. As ever, if you are joining in the, with these prayers live, do uh, give a, a wave, give a shout out, and hopefully we can acknowledge that uh, you are with us. Today's reading is that lovely reading about the breakfast on the beach, one of the post-resurrection appearances of Jesus from John chapter 21, verses 1 to 14. Uh, and if you have the Easter anthems in front of you, then uh, please do, we'll be using those a little later on. See some people popping up, so good morning to Mary, to Sue and to Tim and to Justin uh, and others who may be joining live, to Mike as well. If you do have any items for prayer, anyone, or any situations you'd like to be remembered particularly today, then please do as well type those in as we welcome Karin and Sue. O oh God, creator of light, at the rising of your sun this morning, let the greatest of all lights, your love, rise like the sun within our hearts. Amen. And Venetia joining us as well. Good morning to you. If you've got the uh, order for morning prayer in front of you, we'll use the beginning to that and then uh, we'll come back to that a little later on. Some words from the prophet Nahum. The Lord is good, a strong refuge when trouble comes. God is close to those who trust in him. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and for ever. Amen. And this Easter week, we have been saying the Easter anthems, uh, the uh, collection of scriptures focusing on the resurrection of Jesus have been used in the church for many, many centuries. So if you've got the copy that we'll be using in front of you, please do feel that you can join in. Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us. So let us celebrate the feast, not with the old leaven of corruption and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Christ, once raised from the dead, dies no more, Death has no more dominion over him. In dying he died to sin once for all. In living he lives to God. See yourselves therefore as dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who sleep. For as by man came death, by man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Our Bible reading today is from the Gospel of John, chapter 21 beginning at verse 1. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, 
and he showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas, called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, We will go with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, you have no fish, have you? They answered him, No. He said to them, Cast the net to the right side of the boat and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes, for he was naked, and jumped into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, only about a hundred yards off. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there, with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore full of large fish, a hundred fifty-three of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them, and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It's another of people's favourite readings, uh, that post-resurrection sighting of Jesus on the beach. And uh, there's that very homely feel, isn't there, of Jesus making a barbecue, cooking a fire and waiting for the disciples in the early light. Uh, much scholarly ink has been spilt on what, why 153 fish, whether that really was the count or whether there's symbolic, some symbolic number in there. And no one's really sure about that. But that sense of uh, perhaps uh, the disciples going back to the beginning, Peter saying, I'm going fishing as if you know, everything else in between hadn't happened. Uh, but then again, the presence of the risen Lord turning things around and propelling them onwards into a new life. And that excitement of Peter, good old Peter, impetuous Peter, uh, stripping off and, and diving in uh, and uh, rushing to see the Lord when they see that it is him. That sense also of the, the, the mystery of the resurrection body. They know that it is Jesus, but it doesn't quite look like the Jesus that they remember. Some hints there about the resurrection of the body that we proclaim, uh, that physical resurrection. But another lovely reading this Easter week to take with us into the day. Let us pray. And to the words, Lord, hear us. Please respond, Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray to the Lord, who is our refuge and stronghold. For the health and well-being of our nation, that all who are fearful and anxious may be at peace and free from worry. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the isolated and housebound, that we may be alert to their needs and care for them in their vulnerability. 
for the volunteers who have offered their service, for that spirit of care and neighbourliness. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For our homes and families, for those we share our homes with and those family members who may be far from us and about whom we are concerned and whom we long to see. For our schools and young people, for teachers and others preparing classes for remote schooling next week, for those who find that difficult, for the parents who are, might be struggling with homeschooling, Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those for whom this isolation and lockdown has brought misery, for homes where abuse lurks, for homes where relationships are strained, Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For a blessing on our local community that our neighbourhoods may be places of trust and friendship where all are known and cared for. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. So we pray too for members of our church communities and today for people from Holy Trinity and St Mary's. And so today we pray for Bun and David Sisson, for Charles, for Ros Smith, for John and Debbie Tilby, For Pete and Margaret Tinney, for Anne Tucker, and for Hugh and Elaine, for John and Janet Wilcox, for Karin and Chris Weigold, and for Emily and Sarah and Laura and Tim, for Jean Winter and for Alan, for Becky and family and for Sam. And from the congregation and community of St Mary's, today we pray for Mike and Margaret Gelder and for Claire, for Rosie Hasler, for Heather and Alan Hector, for Tim, Laura, Henry and Holly, for James and Sophie, for Nick and Rachel, Liam, Charlie and Emily, for Lizzie and Robert Hector, for Liz Henderson, for David and Venetia Hopkins, and for Lucy and Jonathan, Ted and Finn, for Pete Tingruel Kid, and for Curtis, and for Kane and Bobby, and for Hayden, Victoria, Erin and Ella, and for Sheila Jack. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We keep silent for a short while to make our own prayers to God. commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And a collect for Easter Sunday. Lord of all life and power, who through the mighty resurrection of your Son overcame the old order of sin and death to make all things new in him, 
grant that we being dead to sin and alive to him life to you in jesus christ may reign with him in glory to whom with you and the holy spirit be praise and honor glory and might now and in all eternity amen and if you have the little order of service with you then we'll use the two prayers towards the end one as we offer today to god and the other as we pray for those particularly uh, under the shadow of COVID-19 at the moment. So together we pray. Almighty and everlasting God, we thank you that you have brought us safely to the beginning of this day. Keep us from falling into sin or running into danger. Order us in all our doings and guide us to do always what is righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy, in this time of uncertainty and distress. Sustain and support the anxious and fearful, and lift up all who are brought low, that we may rejoice in your comfort, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. And let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. I know it's a great source uh, of uh, praise and comfort for me that I know that others are joining in with me as I pray each day so uh, uh, I hope that you feel the same in the company of others as well. I uh, need to say uh, a good morning to a few more people to Karen, to, Car to Karen, to Elizabeth, to Mike Gelder, to Anne, to Helen and to Katie uh, joining us as we pray together this morning. We'll be back uh, for daily prayer tomorrow at nine o'clock. Uh, for those who receive the uh, newsletter by email, there's lots of information uh, for about the services we'll be uh, holding this Sunday. And also I have in a, in a letter I've written uh, detailed the psalm we'll be using for next week. Uh, I think it's Psalm 30. Uh, but uh, I'm saying that from memory, but uh, have a look at that and the reading for each day as well. Uh, if you don't receive the newsletter by email, uh, then have a look at St Mary's website, the, detail, the, the letter and the newsletter you can find on there. If you'd like to, if you don't receive the newsletter by email and would like to, then please do drop me an email and uh, sort of if you with GDPR if you say specifically that you want to receive the, the newsletter then we can make sure that you do so. In the meantime everyone take care and God bless.